Laura Slover is, has been with Achieve since 1998 and, and shortly after the creation by the governors and business leaders. As vice president of the, of the content and policy research, Ms. Slover leads the, Achieve's work on the states in building mathematics capacity, oversees Achieve's benchmarking initiatives, and directs the organization's research agenda. She has extensive experience in reviewing academic standards in the U.S. and abroad and has written a number of reports and articles on this, on this topic. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee for the opportunity for Achieve to testify today at this hearing to discuss the importance of mathematics for all students and to discuss the progress that has occurred in the states on this front. We also want to commend the National Mathematics Panel for its fine work on this area. Uh, so I'm going to talk about what states are doing to move the needle on mathematics education. I want to tell you a little bit about Achieve. Achieve is a bipartisan nonprofit organization created by the nation's governors and business leaders to help states raise academic standards, improve assessments, and strengthen accountability to prepare all students for post-secondary education, careers, and citizenships. And I'm actually talking a little bit off these slides if you want to look at those. Um, one of our primary goals is to address the expectations gap in which students are graduating from high school and yet getting to college or getting to their first job without the requisite skills and knowledge necessary to succeed. Achieve has done research to identify what it does take to succeed um, in mathematics and in English to be prepared for life after high school, whether students attend college or go directly into a job. And to do that, we asked college professors and employers what was most important for students to know. The result was a set of benchmarks in mathematics and English, that, students, um, that in, contains the content knowledge that all students should know. Um, in 2005, Achieve launched the American Diploma Project Network, then a group of 13 states dedicated to a college and career ready policy agenda. And the take up rate for this agenda has been remarkable. Today, the network includes 33 states, reaching 80% of the nation's public school students. Those 33 states are committed to an agenda that includes aligning high school standards with what it takes to succeed in college and careers, requiring all students to take that rigorous set of courses aligned with those standards, incorporating college-ready tests into their state testing systems, and holding high schools accountable for graduating students who are ready for college and careers, and then also really pushing on the higher ed community um, to hold their institutions accountable for the success of incoming students. So, what should students learn in high school to be successful in college and careers? Our research found that students should master four years of grade level English and four years of mathematics with content equivalent to a sequence that includes Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, Data Analysis, and Statistics. This level of content is reflected in Achieve's American Diploma Project benchmarks, and Dr. Fennell alluded to that uh, just a moment ago. So why is higher level mathematics important for all students? Algebra 2, or its equivalent, is a gateway course for higher education, and it teaches quantitative reasoning skills important for the workplace. Achieve's research shows that higher level math courses such as Algebra II improve access to post-secondary education, are critical for college success, and are important to many careers, including those that don't actually require a four-year college degree. And students who complete such coursework are not only better prepared for work, they earn higher salaries. It really is true that the more math you learn, the more money you earn. Unfortunately, there's still a large achievement and opportunity gap in math, disadvantage in minority students for whom rig rigorous math courses can really make the most difference, um, earn fewer math credits, and are less likely than their peers to enroll in higher level math courses. The good news in the states is that when ADP first was formed, um, we didn't see a lot of states who were moving forward on this agenda. At that time, only two states had set their high school graduation requirements at a career and college ready letter, le level. And today, 19 states and the District of Columbia have set their graduation requirements to the college and career ready level, which will help ensure that students are prepared for the challenges they meet when they graduate from high school. 11 additional states are reporting that they plan to do so in the coming years. There's also been a trend across the, across the country for states to become more specific about the math content and courses they require all students to complete. In the past, states tended just to require a number of years of math without specifying what math students were to take. In 2005, for example, 30 states did not even require students to complete Algebra 1, let alone higher level courses like Algebra 2. Now, 30 states and the District of Columbia have specific course taking requirements in mathematics. 19 of those states and DC require students to complete Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 or an equivalent sequence. And two states, Arkansas and Alabama, require students to take a fourth math course beyond Algebra 2. Most of those states have also put in place strong content standards to guide their work. As states make strides in improving the rigor of their standards and graduation requirements, a number of challenges emerge, particularly in the development of college-ready assessments 
and supporting materials for educators. And Achieve is engaged in a number of efforts to help states in their work. Most notably, a common Algebra 2 end of course exam. This is the largest ever multi-state assessment with 14 participating states and over 110,000 students who took the first exam this spring and are currently taking it right now. This exam provides states to uh, the ability to measure college-ready mathematics content, ensure the consistency of content and rigor in Algebra II courses within and among states. So Algebra II is the same regardless of where a student happens to go to school. Uh, it will enable comparisons of performance across state and hopefully over time provide colleges with a measure of readiness for placement into post-secondary credit-bearing courses. In addition to the Algebra II exam, ACHIEVE has a number of other efforts underway to help states, including an Algebra I exam, um, a number of math tools, including mathematics benchmarks for K through 12, model course sequences, sampled classroom problems, example of fourth year courses, and workplace tasks that are actually tied to uh, the application of mathematics. Achieve also provides advocacy tools for states, such as mathematics at work brochures, um, white papers, and other tools to help states make the case that advanced mathematics is very important, as Dr. Fennell stated earlier and as I've just testified to. Um, in closing, I'd like to leave you with a few thoughts about major trends in math education that Achieve has encountered as we work across the states. First of all, Algebra II is the new Algebra I. Every student needs to have it. But it's not your grandfather's Algebra II that I'm talking about. We need to find new and innovative ways to teach it so that we can reach more students, ways that emphasize conceptual understanding and not just straight procedures. Finding new ways to present and make mathematics more relevant to students without diluting its rigor will enable more students to be prepared for college and good careers. And along those lines, more states and districts are contemplating organizing high school mathematics into integrated course sequences, and they're really putting an energy and thinking carefully about how to revamp the career and technical programs so that mathematics is a major part of it. Um, another thing we've learned is that employers and post-secondary faculty place a high value on uh, sort of the non-traditional mathematics, like statistics, probability, and data analysis. Um, states are increasingly interested in ensuring that their mathematics standards are internationally benchmarked, as Chairman Miller uh, mentioned in his own remarks, and um, Achieve is currently working in that regard to look at the standards in the world's highest performing countries. And finally, I'll just close by saying, if we think about how we're going to really raise the bar on mathematics education, it is going to come down to teacher quality and teacher capacity. It's one of the greatest challenges we have in making more advanced math classes available to more students at the secondary level, and it is an area in which we have a lot of work ahead of us. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today, and I look forward to answering your questions.